This land is your land, and this land is my land, from the California to the New York Island. On January 16th, and um, you've all received the minutes, um, so uh, we are not going to be able to vote on the minutes, so we'll move that to the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, so at this point in time, uh, let's introduce Mary Ellen LaRocca, Director of Human Service, and she's going to present on the emergency, emergency shelter plan. Thank you, Mary Ellen, for joining us, and I understand you came twice. Uh, so she came in December when we had canceled our meeting, so we really appreciate you coming out and educating us. Well, the shelter is located over at the center building, the gymnasium, cafeteria, and the lounge of the senior center are utilized for the shelter. Um, since, I think it was in 2007, we opened it for the first time for one day for that uh, rainstorm. The people that came to the shelter um, were referred to family members to stay. They didn't, you know, there wasn't a need to stay at the shelter. But since then, we've had three hurricanes, two blizzards, and then if you remember a couple years back, that terrible snowstorm in October, yes, um, where we opened the shelter. And we do have a plan in place should there be a significant power outage, um, people can contact the police department, they will contact myself, and then the town make a determination to open the shelter. Um, I will tell you, we did have some volunteers in the past, and because several years have gone by. We did one training last year, but we are in the process of looking for volunteers. And several years ago, I think it was in 2011, Ted Pockowitz uh, came in and he brought in Group 63 of the Boy Scouts. And they did a plan of the emergency shelter where they set up, I think it was 78 cots um, fit the gymnasium, uh, cots can fit Cub Scout if needed up on the stage. In all the times we had to open the shelter, I'd say the most people that were there on a given night was 26. And that was for a hurricane. But during that week, people come and go. And people have asked me, is that the best spot for shelter? We at Human Services feel that it is. However, if there was really a large number of people out of the shelter, then we'd have to go to the Right. But we can't accommodate that number quite easily. Um, we once it, we make a determination that the to be open, uh, the word would go out that a killer. The residents, there's an app, and I I, I, I put it yes. on my um, iPad and I and iPhone. Yeah, which is wonderful. Now that all the residents get in, because not only will the town send in. We're also an information center. So people come to us during the day to find out information about power, water. They come in to charge their cell phones, have medical equipment that need to charge. Take showers. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't have showers there, but we had to take road school. Of course, JC. Wonderful. Okay. And allowed our residents. Once a person comes into the shelter, um, we have an intake process. <coughs> and we've been trained by the Red Cross. We were partner with the Red Cross. I mean, if it was something that happens specific to Woodbridge for volunteers, I want a case of a hurricane or a bad blizzard. Basically, we're operating the shelter, but we always notify the Red Cross when we open. We partner with them. They provide the training, 
And once a person comes into the shelter, we do have rules that they need to follow. Um, we have to make an assessment. Once in a while, someone might not be appropriate for the shelter because they need additional medical mm -hmm. um, medical services. Doesn't happen often, but we get more people 60 and over um, mm -hmm. into the shelter. We That's have what I was had ask you. families, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we provide meals um, for the people there, activities. Um, and then when they're in the shelter, once the uh, storm is over, they can come and go, and we try to you know, <coughs> assist them the best we can. So when would you use the high school? At what point would you use the high school? Uh, once you have 26, over 26 people? Well, no, I, I think it would be more than that, maybe okay. about 70. 75 okay yeah. i think you know we can accommodate 100 but once you're pushing 70 okay yeah. one of the reasons why it's good to have it at our office because number one we have all of our files there we have support services we can get on the phone with right. agencies right. and at times we have resources right there for example a person got stranded during a snowstorm, and I commend the police department because I think they possibly could have saved this person from going into hypothermia. Wow. He was soaking wet, chilled, and everything. Oh, wow. And we kind of rummaged through everything. We found socks that were left over for Christmas, some clothing um, to give them. Wow. So, you know, that was just one yeah. case right there. Right, Sometimes right. we have files if they're elderly. And family members who to contact. Mm -hmm. We've also developed a quite lengthy emergency call list. The police have it, the fire department has it, and we have it. Mm -hmm. So if we know a storm is coming, usually in advance, um, the social worker or the police department will call those people on the list to see if anything is needed. Great job. Uh, you have any questions? Uh, anybody else? The, the hours, if other than when there's an emergency, are, is it open on a regular basis on any level or just as needed? As needed. Mm -hmm. We also would serve as a warming center if anyone needed it. And all they have to do is go through the police department. It's after hours and they will contact. Do you have ready available, readily available um, medical um, access? For example, if someone had needs and just well, the hypothermia is a great example, but they weren't able to communicate those needs. Um, do you have any links with hospitals or doctors that might? Um, Not doctors, help you? but we do have links with the health department. Okay. And at times, um, it was after a hurricane. They did send nurses during the week. And we also have um, a contract with Visiting Nurse Agency because at times we're getting people in there um, that really have some special needs and need a, a little assistance. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's and right. especially if there was a large number mm -hmm. of people. And that's why we truly do need volunteers. Mm -hmm. If you could help spread the word if you know of anyone. And they don't have to, um, it doesn't have to be only in the evenings. You know, even if they work, they could come on the weekends. They could come during the day. Um, but we want to be pre prepared that if a large number mm -hmm. of people needed this. Show. And we have 100 cats, blankets, yeah. and pillows yeah. available. Well, thank you very much. Um, any other questions? No? Thank you so much. Okay, thank And we appreciate you coming oh, out. Sure. Cold night. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keep on doing the good job you're doing. Amy had a good point. Um, we do accommodate pets. Oh. Um, especially after Hurricane Katrina, um, a lot was instituted to take care of pets. That's, that's a good point. And yeah. in the past, we've set up a pet shelter at the old firehouse. Yeah. Um, is a designated spot. Do you have like uh, cages or? Uh... Well, we work with Karen down at the animal shelter. Okay. I know she brings up that equipment. Yeah. Okay. And there is a state I'm sure, regional. I'm sure people have their own too, right. so they could bring. 
and there is a state regional um, shelter for pets that will well, move around. Yeah. But again, it's that's more, good to know. If yeah. it's isolated, I didn't know that. Yeah. State. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Thank you, Amy. Sure. Okay, we're moving now to public comments. Um, we have Amy Morella. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. Um, I'm Amy Morella, 184 Rimmon Road. Um, I see that the dog park is um, on Fitzgerald Track is on your agenda after public comment, so I've come to offer a few thoughts about that. First, um, I understand that David and Ginny Schneider presented, offered a letter in opposition. Yes. yes. So I wanted to make sure that got to you because they gave it to Mrs. Shaw. Yep, it, um, it's here. Second, I um, wanted to enter into the record a letter that was submitted by the Land Trust's President, Brian Pines, to the Woodbridge Town News and ran in the Woodbridge Town okay. News, um, uh, pointing out um, some uh, conflicts with putting a dog park um, in the Chestnut Orchard or Chestnut mm -hmm. Grove. Mm -hmm. um, but so your record is complete. Okay. I okay. went ahead and made a copy yep. okay. and brought it offline. Thank you. Thank you very time. much. Um, then, just to correct your record, um, there was a statement by one of the dog park advocates at the last meeting that there are 34 spaces at the Fitzgerald track. I went down to the building department, um, spoke to them, and yeah. in fact, there is no designated number of parking spaces at the Fitzgerald track. Um, and so I don't know where, how they came up with that number. Okay. Okay. Um, but if you want to know how many cars can be accommodated in the existing parking space, I suggest you uh, talk to somebody in the town okay. call about that because okay. uh, there is no designated number. Okay. Um, my own observation, as I had submitted to you, is that if there's 25 uh, cars there, it certainly seems. Mm -hmm. uh, so lastly, I have a, a yet another letter to okay. submit to Coop Up that I have prepared. Um, and. Uh, I will, I guess I, the best thing to do is to read it into the record sure. um, and then I'll hand it to you. Um, so uh, at your last meeting, I suggested that you invite Officer Karen Lombardi from District Animal Control to offer her expertise on the appropriateness of the dog park proposal for the Chestnut Grove. And I'm hoping you will follow through and seek Officer Lombardi's input. Okay. She can provide information regarding dog parks generally and also offer input on the various alternative locations that have been suggested to date, including the Chestnut Grove and the old tennis courts at the Woodbridge Country Club. I also want to alert you to the need to consider the requirements of the Americans with Disability Act. This civil rights law applies to small towns. Indeed, the U.S. Department of Justice has issued an ADA guide for small towns, and I provided the web link in this letter. The dog park proposal documentation, um, which is this uh, proposal of October 12th, um, expressly advocates for a dog park to accommodate those dog owners who face impaired mobility. On page two of the proposal, you will find the following sentences. Quote, many have come to us asking for assistance to get this park created as soon as possible as their doctors have recommend they give up their beloved pets before they have a bad fall walk them. And also another sentence on page two, more than half those walking their dogs at the fields are over 50. Several have a leash in one hand and a cane in the other. Others have obvious mobility issues, end quote. If that is the case, then the town should comply with the ADA in citing, designing, and constructing a dog park. Part two, section G of the U.S. Department of Justice Guide for Small Town discusses parks and recreation programs and specifically addresses the need for accessible parking spaces. Given the statements in the dog park proposal and the requirements of the ADA, the town must consider the need to construct ADA compatible parking spaces at the entrance of any approved dog park. Current parking at the Fitzgerald track is a substantial distance removed from the proposed dog park site, the Chestnut Grove location. In my view, the construction of new ADA compatible parking at the Chestnut Grove would be incompatible with the town's efforts to date to minimize vehicular traffic at the Fitzgerald track. As you know, the town has recently installed signage at Fitzgerald to limit the number of vehicles that traverse the same trails used by numerous walkers. Fortunately, 
existing parking at the Woodbridge Country Club is already sited adjacent to the proposed location for uh, the alternate proposed location for a dog park. Modifications there to meet ADA requirements would be comparatively simple and would not require the introduction of increased vehicular traffic on highly popular walking. For these reasons and those I've offered on earlier occasions, I urge you to recommend that the Board of Selectmen turn down the proposal to site a dog park at the Chestnut Road. Should the town decide to add a dog park to the current suite of recreational opportunities, then the town can and should find a better location. Thank you for your interest and comments from residents you. as you consider the dog park. Thank you very much. Thank so you. we have, are there any other comments? I have a yeah. question. Yeah. Um, so minimally, are we, what are, yeah, minimally, what would you propose would be the uh, number of spaces required um, with, with, you know, reverence to the, um, the law? So the law, it, you know, I took a quick look at the God and I'm not an expert. I think somebody who has more expertise should look at it. It may be under the guide that it's not required to have ADA parking spaces, but then it still says you should still put them in. It's still recommended. Yeah. Um, and given the testimony or, or the, uh, the, uh, the assertions of those who want a dog park, uh, frankly, I would suggest a minimum of two, maybe more. I mean, I, I just don't know. I mean, they're the ones who are saying that these are necessary. I have to say, <coughs> I have not seen, observed, and I walk my dogs, not now, but during better weather, almost every day at the Fitzgerald track. Um, I have not observed a large number of people with mobility issues. Maybe that's because they can't get there. Um, uh, they can't walk. There is one gentleman who walks with a cane, and he was there today. So I don't think he's deterred uh, by walk. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's a record in the town. <laughs> The town is putting a ramp over at the senior center right mm -hmm. now. It has to be thought it has about. To be. Yeah. And my biggest concern is the town with its eyes, you know, half closed would put a park in there and then somebody would point out, hey, what about the ADA? Yeah. And then you sort of default put in park. Right. Um, I really think that that well, would that's why it's important be the backwards to way talk to about it, it, to discuss it, to vet it, yeah. and uh, to make sure that we're looking at every right. angle of it. You know. so, so what I'm saying is, if it's a concern, as stated by the dog park advocates, then I would say two to three spaces, you know, would yeah. be sort of the minimum that you would want to put there if it truly is an issue. Uh, and that, I think, is going to be incompatible right. um, with your effort to minimize um, having parking, having cars on yep. the Fitzgerald track. Yep. Um, plus, frankly, once you put in a parking space, there are people who don't need uh, ADA compliance who go around with tags. I mean, you know, it's, it's just sort of opens up the Pandora's box that people want, will want to drive there. And I've, I've previously stated in a letter, I think people are going to want to drive there anyway. Uh, uh, so I see, I, I see, I think it's just sort of drawing people. So these spaces would have to be close to the park? Or, or that, the basic premise of the ADA, yeah. I mean, that's why you're supposed to have compliant yeah. parking. We have it downstairs right, right. here because of the steps. So it's, a compli it's close, but you have to have it in close proximity. Right. Certainly not. Right. Uh, I'm yeah. not a good measure. I didn't put it yeah. in, my in my letter because I can't judge distance, right. but it's right. got to be several hundred feet. Yeah, no, uh, I agree. So I agree. That would uh, do you have any information about ADA and requirements, Beth? No. Um, I would imagine you do. Yeah. You would want it. You would want it. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. what Whether I'm. Whether the wrong people park it or not is that's a police. Yeah. But, right, but I mean, I just if that's the purpose, is so people who have dogs and have difficulty exercising them have access to a dog park as an alternative to walking. Yeah. Then that if that's yeah. the town decision, then the town yeah. ought to accommodate. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So. Good yeah. point. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Amy. Okay, Maria. Maria, welcome. Thank you. Um, in addition, I have another letter. Just introduce yourself, if you okay. don't mind. Uh, my name is Maria Kane, and I'm from 1891 Litchfield Turnpike. Thank you. Um, this letter has been published at the town um, at the Woodbridge Town News, but I would like to read it for the record this evening. This is the letter that Amy just gave us. No, it's a different. Oh, it's a different one. one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. 
As former chairs of Woodbridge Conservation Commission, we opposed the proposal to site a dog park on the Fitzgerald track. We, are, we have both owned dogs and do not oppose the concept of creating a dog park in Woodbridge, but the Fitzgerald track is the wrong location. In the 1990s, the Conservation Commission promoted the construction of the Fitz Fitzgerald trails. We both served on the Conservation Commission at that time. But I say both uh, Kathy Garland and I. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, let me repeat that. We both served on the Conservation Commission at that time and remember that others in town were eyeing the Fitzgerald track for <coughs> active recreation facilities such as a baseball field. By placing trails at the site, our commission hoped to offer a unique passive recreation opportunity to the residents while preserving the tranquil ag agrarian character of the land. As we and our fellow commission members saw it then, other than the trails, the only community, only, only the community gardens, which date back to 1970, should be allowed at the Fitzgerald Track. Once the trails were constructed, the Conservation Commission consistently advocated to preserve the Fitzgerald Track's tranquility and site active recreational facilities at other town locations. We recognize that protecting the Fitzgerald Track from change would protect the unique experience offered to walkers on Fitzgerald trails, preserve the track as a vital link to our town's agrarian heritage, and maintain the natural habitat of the parcel for the benefit of wildlife, bird watchers, and nature lovers. The town has yet to consider other possible locations for a dog park. The Board of Selectmen should work with residents and the appropriate commission, commissions to assess all town properties and identify the best locations for the active recreation of facilities such as a dog park, ball fields, and valuable volleyball courts that are recommended by the current Recreation Commission. There are better locations than the Fitzgerald Track for these active recreational recreation amenities, including possibly the Woodbridge Country Club. <coughs> Sincerely, Kathy Gardland, Conservation Chair 1983-07, Maria Kane, Conservation Chair 2007-2013. Thank you very much. <laughs> you have a copy of that for us? I can give you one. Okay, great. Yep, thank you. Okay, good evening. Welcome. Good to see you. Louisa Cunningham, 89 Keys Road. Um, I think a dog park for Woodbridge is a fantastic idea, just not at Fitzgerald. Um, I'm a walker and birder and gardener at Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the tranquility, I enjoy the wild, and I think with an increase in dog activity, we're, all of that's going to be lessened. Um, and I do believe if we have a dog park, we're going to have even more dogs. It's going to be an attractive place to bring you. Um, and so I'm just puzzled that the town, and perhaps this is already happening, um, isn't looking at the various other small parcels around us um, that could be I used. think it's happening. Okay, yeah. great. Um, may I, can I just finish my comment? Um, it also strikes me that as a person who lives on Keys Road, um, if it were possible to move the memorial from Center Road to that playground that is being used much more than the one on Center Road, um, and use that playground that's nicely fenced in with parking um, as a dog park. It's just one idea. I've heard earlier uh, the idea of also using the Woodbridge Country Club. But in any case, um, it strikes me as um, not very wise um, move. In fact, kind of a lack of planning to just uh, turn an area because it's got a fence into a dog park. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the board actually is looking at other possibilities. Mm -hmm. This property is not the only one that's being considered. Great. Just, just for these reasons. Uh, could you clarify the statement about the memorial on Center Road? Well, this, there's a playground just beyond the tennis courts on the right-hand side. Right. Oh, right. Okay. And that's that's in honor of a couple of children that yeah. were um, 
killed on bicycles. Exactly. So I don't yeah. think I don't think that that would be an appropriate spot. To well, I'm not so sure. I mean, having been involved with all sorts of naming occasions, um, my job of 30 years, um, it, it, most naming is not in perpetuity. And the fact is, if we're memorializing these children in a place where you hear children laughing and playing and enjoying life, um, the logical place is at, at um, what is now called, I think, Peace Place. Peace Place. Um, you know, put something, if there's a plaque on center rope, uh, move it over there. Yeah. Um, who knows? Yeah. Maybe those children had dogs and love their dogs. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I think we're a little short-sighted to assume that that has to, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's it's one not. of the properties that's being considered. Great. That's the old choo-choo train park. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, it is. Yeah. Yep. And I, I don't think the, um, the uh, country club is a, an appropriate um, place also because we don't know what's going to happen with the co yeah. country club. So, but I think, you know, there are other places that we're looking at. And mm -hmm. so hopefully we can all come to a consensus that, you know, th this place would be the best place for the dog park. Yeah, honestly, I, I think it should wait until we are closer to understanding what we're going to do with the golf course because it should be a piece of the overall town planning. Right. We've waited this long. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes. Can I just go back to the golf course? Yeah. Um, the only thing that I just talk about the golf course and, and why we were suggesting it is because. I mean, it, certainly we need a plan for this whole thing in right, order for right. you to actually get right. a permanent place for it. Right. But I thought in the meantime, where we don't know what's going on in the golf course, I think it uh, is a good place. There's a fenced-in old tennis mm -hmm. court there, which mm -hmm. is not being used. Mm -hmm. But also, you you know, we need to have reason to sort of keep up the golf course in a sense, yeah. maybe more mowing stuff. It gives, it gives us um, some purpose and reason mow around there and mm -hmm. clear some spots maybe we cannot in addition to the dog park we can have a wheelchair trail for the handicap around there mm -hmm. and, and that keeps you know you know the, the expense if we're going to do anything in the golf course mm -hmm. uh, just sort of like to maintain it and 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 <coughs> have a reason for us to maintain it yeah. in the meantime while we're nothing is permanent. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because yes. I think right now we're over growing brush and yeah. and 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 uh, really destroying a lot of things over there. So this gives us a little bit more to, yeah. and I think it's worth thinking about in the meantime because hey, it, it's nine years since that golf course and I don't know how many more years it's going right. to take for us to, to do something permanent with it, you know? So <laughs> I thought making it useful somehow mm -hmm. Without disturbing any other things, mm -hmm. memorials and that, and that. Although, I that memorial idea is also not not mm -hmm. too bad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you well, very much. Okay, so let's also um, mention that. Okay, we have two other letters here, and one is from um, Virginia and David uh, Schneider. Uh, 25 Castway Road, and they oppose creating the dog park at the Fitzgerald property. And we also have a letter um, sent some facts regarding the Woodbridge Land Trust Chestnut Orchard um, from Brian Pine, and he's the president of the Wood Woodbridge Land Trust, and we'll include this with our um, record. Uh, okay. All right. So um, moving on. Update on the cr uh, cross country team proposed projects and update on other troops initiatives. Patricia. Yeah. So we had a meeting on December twentieth with the Trail Runners Club from Amity High School and uh, Sheila Helfenbein, and it was um, decided that they he, they submitted their proposal for the priority projects, okay. and in the spring they're going to start with the Newton Road Park. And the town of Woodbridge doesn't need to give them um, permission okay. because the Woodbridge Land Trust or, uh, manages it, and they've already spoken to them. So that's their plan. Okay. And then the other projects are more long-term, and they're working on coming up with some budgets, and they're going to go to the next Board of Selectmen meeting in February or March with an outline budget. 
for review. Okay, so they're going to start with? They're going to start with the um, Newton Road Park. Newton Road. And that's in this handout. Okay. That, um, did, I, did I pass that out to you? I'll pass these out. Yep, thank you. Copy. And they did a great job. The kids have done a good job at organizing. Perfect. Um, and the boys are like David. I'll take it. Thank you. And that's it. That's it. Okay, very good. Like that. All right. Um, review and discuss the document on the cutting of the trees. Well, um, Nancy Pope can't, couldn't be here today, but she wanted to be here for this discussion because she had, she had some concerns about the tree cutting in the town. And uh, she had mentioned to me that um, we, Poopop had received um, or had um, approved a document concerning tree cutting, but that's not the case. We can't, we can't approve any documents. It has, the board has to approve the documents. It has to go to the board. We probably, you know, and I haven't seen the document yet, but we, we probably saw a, a document from the state, which I, re, I sent to you, and basically that's what we um, go by, um, how the town decides which t uh, uh, trees can be cut, and it's Warren Connor, who's the, the tree warden, and he goes around, and if he sees diseased trees, then he will make a recommendation. He has a list of the trees that need to be cut down, and usually it's in conjunction with the, the homeowner. So if the, the homeowner is informed, and if there's an issue, if the homeowner has an issue, um, they, you know, they work together. So there hasn't been really that many issues according, I, I received this document from um, uh, Betsy Yegla, and um, she mentioned that we began talking with UI about the process, and the recommendation <coughs> was finalized after the process was agreed upon. In general, the recommendation closely follows follow state law. There are few recommendations that deviate from the law. Colored flags, for example, they don't do colored flags. They'll, they'll just put a, a, a mark on the tree, a paint mark um, for removal, uh, just not with the, the colored flags and uh, also the process is the, U, the UI contractors tell Warren where they plan to work when it is on a town road uh, the abutting property owners are notified uh, the company it will remove the tree the owner can reject the idea or ask for a trimming instead of a removal UI or Lewis Asplon can appeal but that request and remove the tree if it's dangerous for example, if the tree is leaning on wires. Um, okay, so, you know, so we never approved anything. This is based on, you know, what the town policy is. And um, so it seems like it's been working very well. So I think that if uh, Nancy wants to bring this up again, you know, she can bring it up at the next meeting. Uh, but I don't have any other information about this. Do you have any other information, Jeff? Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Oversees, all Oversees it all. So, okay, very good. All right. So now we're moving on to um, Lauren's not here. So we'll move the item number eight, the collaboration between conservation and commission. We're looking forward to working with the conservation commission, and um, we are continuing to um, chip at the items that we have on the town, the um, planning, the conservation and development um, plan, and the presentation tonight that was on our um, on our plan. So we're moving along, and we're, we will continue to do that. Um, tentative items for the Coupa agenda for Tuesday, February twentieth. Um, to remember, it's going to be Tuesday because. President's Day on Monday. Um, Sheila McCreven, Special Projects Manager, will come and demonstrate how to navigate the Newtown website. 
I feel it's important mm -hmm. because, you know, I think that this would be, you know, to invite uh, town residents to come to that meeting because um, there's a lot of information there. You know, instead of calling the town, you, it's uh, unbelievable. You can find properties, you can find um, boundaries. You, it's just unbelievable what, what's on there. So I think um, finally we're moving forward uh, to tech, with technology. This would be a, a good tool, a good presentation. So any other um, items for the February meeting? No, um, nothing new, just probably elaborate more on some of the existing things. Right, um, we'll keep the, the dog, the, the, the dog park. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I think, updates. I think something. Yeah, will updates. Be rolling. Is it worth discussing that I might mention? Oh, yes. What, what, why don't you talk about it? Yeah. Um, I, I texted Laura because I was um, concerned, of, not cons well, I am concerned. I yeah. was wondering ethically. Um, especially since we had the Freedom of Information Act um, more explicitly explained to us, I, I was conflicted mm -hmm. in my thinking um, because recently we've all been given opportunities mm -hmm. to contribute to the various um, commissions in town mm -hmm. and organizations. And I was worried that in, in some way might we be, uh, you know, um, presenting a conflict of interest if we did that, you know, for example, the land trust, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are several um, organizations that normally I would contribute to, but then I thought, am I doing something mm -hmm. that's no. going, you know. And, and I checked in on, yeah. on this with, with Stephanie Charlotte, you know, and so she responded and she said, and she sent us a copy of the um, ethics, the ethics document. I will send this email to you uh, when I get home. And um, basically, it states that if you're working with the, the town, or with, if you're working somehow, you're you know you're getting compensation of some sort, then it would be a conflict of interest. Okay. But you're not getting any compensation. Right. And I've been getting these um, yeah, you know material. yeah. materials mm -hmm. for donations from the fire department, from oh, yeah. you know from. <laughs> From um, Masara Farm, Farm. Mm -hmm. you know, you you yeah. you get them, and uh, yeah. it's not a conflict of interest okay. if you make a donation to them. Yeah. That's cool. Anybody else have any other comments? New material. <clears throat> okay, then we'll call the meeting to uh, to adjournment. Okay. Um, second. Okay. All right. Meeting is adjourned and it's. I don't know if you can adjourn nine. actually since you don't have a quorum. I guess we have to stay here, right? <laughs> <laughs> this land is your land and this land is my land. From the California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. I went a walk in that ribbon of highway I saw above me that endless skyway Saw below me that golden valley This land was made for you and me